Welcome to Elf's Castle. It used to be featured on the back of the 500 Deutsche Mark bill, and these days it's a big hit on Instagram. Not bad for a nearly 900 year old castle. There are an estimated 20,000 castles in Germany, although some look a little worse for wear. But whether romantic ruins or fairy tale perfection is your thing, you're spoiled for choice here. There's even a route called Castle Road that stretches all the way from Mannheim to Bayreuth and takes you past some 60 castles. The glorious Schloss Neuschwanstein in Bavaria is one of the most visited castles in the whole of Europe and is even said to have inspired Walt Disney. Okay, time for a quick language check. On a fairy tale sightseeing tour through Germany, you're probably going to see two different words being used, Burg and Schloss. In general, a Burg is fortified, protected by a wall or a moat. A Schloss is closer to the English word palace and would have been built as a luxurious residence. But some medieval Burgen have been converted into Schlosser, and sometimes the words are used interchangeably. If in doubt, just take both names, like Schloss Burg in Zollingen. The Normans were the pioneers when it came to castles in Europe. The Germans caught on in the Middle Ages. So how can you recognise a German castle in a lineup? One clue might be a tall tower in the middle called a Bergfried. Unlike the English keep, it was not intended for people to live there. It was for observation, defence and status. Palaces then took the reins from around the 16th century, and they were all about showing off, really. Germany looked to France and Italy for aesthetic inspiration. In fact, Ludwig II of Bavaria, who was known as the fairy tale king, decided to build his own version of the Palace of Versailles. Sadly, he ran out of money before his Herrenkiemse palace was finished. Ah, happens to the best of us, Ludwig. There does seem to be quite an appetite for royal gossip here in Germany. I definitely know more about the British royal family now than I did when I lived in the UK. Perhaps that's because the Germans no longer have royals of their own. At the end of the First World War, all official royal titles and associated legal privileges were abolished. However, it was permitted that some titles could be merged into the family's surnames. And that's why we're now able to talk to a real-life count. Ich heiße mit vollem Namen Dr. Karl Graf und edler Herr von und zu Elz, genannt Forst von Stromberg. Wofür stehen von und zu? Wir sind entstanden auf Elz und wir sitzen jetzt noch auf Elz. Von und zu. Was bedeutet das heutzutage, ein Graf zu sein? Na ja, hauptsächlich ein Haufen von geschichtlicher Last. Ich fühle mich zuerst einmal meiner Familie verpflichtet, denn äh, sie hat mich beauftragt, die Burg in einem besseren Zustand zu übergeben, als ich sie übernommen habe. Und natürlich fühle ich mich auch der Bevölkerung gegenüber verpflichtet, denn hier habe ich ein bedeutendes nationales Erbe und ich möchte es allen Menschen öffnen und immer noch etwas schöner machen, wenn es geht. Apart from counts and tourists, who else might you find in a castle? There are plenty of spooky legends surrounding Germany's castles. A popular apparition is the Weiße Frau, or White Lady, whose appearance was often thought to signal the imminent death of someone in the family. Here at Elz Castle, it's Agnes who's said to haunt the hallways. The story goes that in the 15th century, the Count's rather rebellious daughter was supposed to marry the squire of Braunsberg, who by all accounts was a bit of a jerk. She refused to kiss him at their engagement party. How do you think he took that? Not so well. He disappeared for a year and then finally returned to attack the castle. Agnes donned her brother's armour and joined the battle, but she was killed by her would-be fiancé. The legend goes that Agnes's ghost is sometimes seen in the castle courtyard after midnight. 